I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on my screen and go ahead and put this into presentation mode. Beautiful. Okay. So thank you, for, first of all, um, for inviting me to be a part of this group uh, and giving me the opportunity to present. I'm really excited. Uh, for me, more than anything, um, I'm trying to get myself out of my house as much as I can, and the only way I can do it is virtually. So getting to do these presentations is uh, special for me as well. Uh, I also love the opportunity to be able to share and educate. So I do want to put this out there, though. Um, since I don't know anybody personally, I usually don't have such a grizzly beard. Uh, I've been uh, trying to grow out my rabbi beard while I'm here. No, I'm just, uh, it's just uh, going in the quarantine mo mode. My wife told me by May 1st, I have to shave it. So I promise I'll have a haircut and a clean shave soon enough. Um, just to tell you a little more about myself and why I chose to present on this topic. Um, so I work with a company, I'm the managing partner and founder of Equiturn Business Solutions. Uh, we're a management consulting firm that offers multiple levels of support to small businesses. Um, one of the main areas that we focus in is marketing, but we also do finance, management consulting, um, all operations, all that. But our, one of our main um, departments, the one that I help oversee is our marketing department. So alongside my work at SCORE, uh, which I don't know if you're familiar with SCORE, but it's a, um, a mentorship um, and free workshops organization that brings together business professionals to educate the community. So I'm a presenter there, and uh, I think it was Eugenia who saw me in it and asked me to come join in and, and do a similar presentation for you all. Um, I did adapt it a little bit, just so you know now. I added a few slides about specifically about coronavirus and COVID and how to adapt your business during this time a little bit uh, when it comes to marketing and building your marketing strategy. Um, but I want to be very transparent as I go into the overarching agenda for this. Uh, it's going to be more of a big picture overview of marketing because if I were to build a specific strategy just for your company, it would take time. Every business is unique. And you'll see that as we go through this, what my goal is, is for you to customize your strategy using some of the big picture message, uh, information and tools that I'm going to be giving you. And then I'll give you some insider tips also when we get through it. Uh, but for now, as we go through this section of it, um, take the time to kind of understand the bigger picture of marketing and what elements are really essential in building your overarching strategy, uh, especially now more than ever. So I'm going to give you some examples and statistics. Why is this even important? Why would I even be talking about it? Uh, I'll cover some key elements of marketing. There's way more than I'm going to touch on. I'm positive you will ask questions about it or bring up things that I didn't even address during this. Um, and that's fine. There are so much out there in the world of marketing, and I, I really want to encourage you to ask as many questions as you can. Uh, let me know if I'm, I didn't touch on something you want me to dive deeper into. The floor is yours. Um, after that, I'm going to cover some tools. But even when I give you the elements, I will give you places to do it yourself. Now, I run a marketing firm, so what I'm doing right now is pretty much giving you the tools to do it yourself if you need to do it. I'm happy to do that. Uh, I think everyone deserves that, that access to be able to accomplish this. Um, also, I'm going to talk a little bit about the analytics because to me, driving your car without understanding analytics is like driving a car blind. Uh, it's very dangerous. It's really essential to understand the inner workings of what you're doing. Finally, we'll go through a lead generation funnel, uh, and then I'll open the floor to questions. Usually what I always ask uh, when I do this in person is what type of marketing are you doing now? So just take a second um, and mold it around in your own head. What marketing are you doing? What do you wish to be doing? What do you hope to understand? Um, you can put it inside the chat group. Feel free. I'm going to keep an eye on the chat group throughout the presentation. So if something comes up and I want to jump to it, I can. Uh, but do think to yourself, what is the marketing I'm doing now? What, are, what do I hope to go with things? I always like to open up with a short video to kind of ease the tension uh, and maybe it's something that will relate to you but it has to mostly do with marketing uh, and it's, it kind of set the stage of if you're going to do it do it right so here you go just one second you should be able to hear it um, The reason I play that video is because a lot of the times when you think of marketing, there's a lot of people who do it in a very, I don't want to say shady, but untraditional way, whether it's buying clicks or buying engagements or taking the, the untraditional route to hopefully grow their business. Uh, and when we talk about what's going on right now, and when we talk about especially what's happening currently in, in current events with coronavirus, it's essential to take this very seriously and do it the right way. 
uh, especially because when you want to engage the right audience, you want to make sure your message is coming off the right way. The only way to really do that effective is to do marketing in the proper channels and the proper procedures. So while he was buying clicks and getting arrested, uh, we won't be doing that. You can't get arrested for buying clicks, but you can get waste a lot of money and get very little results. So why is it so important to actually build a strong marketing strategy? Well, there's a lot of different um, really credible sources that talk about it. Uh, you have the ambassador that says 71% of consumers who have a good social media service experience with a brand are likely to recommend it to others. So if you're doing a really good job, you'll get to not just the one buyer, but many buyers. HubSpot, which is one of the leading um, platform management tools, visual content is more than 40 times more likely to get shared on social media than other types of content. So when you're thinking about what you're sharing and what you're posting, try to think about videos, images, all of that. That's gonna really be the difference in being successful. Um, next up is Google. Studies show that between 70 to 80% of people research a company online before visiting the small business or making a purchase with them. Now right now more than ever, most people can't even walk into your business unless maybe you have an essential company. Uh, but at this point, it's still important to know that no matter what, even after coronavirus, someone is going to look up your business before they even walk in the door. And last but not least, it's from Forbes themselves, the main benefit of marketing and branding tools and reason to employ them is to boost profits. That's why we're here. Um, I'm not trying to say that we want to take advantage of the system, but we definitely want to generate more revenue if we're going to do marketing. So that's the whole purpose of this. Uh, and Forbes says it themselves. It's the most essential part of marketing and branding. So the first and foremost, before you can build any real strategy for your business, you've got to know who your market is. If you don't know who your target market is, you're not going to be as successful on these different platforms, especially when it comes to marketing. Because when you're doing marketing, you can actually put in these specifics. You can dive so deep to ch narrow and narrow your audience so it makes it cheaper for you to reach your audience and more likely to make a sale when you're doing it. A lot of times people post online and they're like, why am I wasting my time throwing this out to the masses? If you know your market, you will not be throwing it to the masses. So what I suggest is think about not just the gender, um, not just their income or their occupation, but think about their interests and their values. What do they really care about? What do they like? If you're an adventure company, they probably really enjoy hiking and outdoors. Uh, if you're a restaurant, they might be foodies that like your certain type of food or cultural food that you're providing. Um, think about the interests and values, um, the hobbies, even age groups. That's actually one of the largest section of, of target market on marketing. When you put in an age group, it will slowly decline or reduce the number of people you're targeting, making it more likely to generate that sale. Uh, every time I do this in a group I always tell people take them and we go through the rest of this um, and I will talk to uh, direct and indirect marketing and all of that I see some people posting here uh, and I love that keep pushing it out there I'm glad you're doing some email marketing as well that's very very good so you've probably heard this term before what's so important about branding I mean if you've been doing business for over 20 30 years branding while it was essential it wasn't the backbone of the business like it is today because of social media because of online marketing branding has become such a term used across the board for meaning to be successful in your business when it comes to marketing so I always start with this after you know your target market build a brand around them that's how you build a strategy so think of values like I said a moment ago that resonate with them Think of values of the reason you built your company in the first place. Is it your company based on being honorable, being respectful, um, being fair? Think about what your company is, uh, is value-based on and what would resonate with your, your clients. So if you're adventurous, use that. I always say to choose three. If there's a way to pick a number so it's very realistic, pick three. Um, test it with your market now. Test it with some of your current uh, clients and see how they resonate with it. Next up is the elements of a brand. Now, I have a whole presentation just about branding. So if you wanted to really dive deep into branding and understand what is the elements and the perspective of branding and why is it so essential, I'm happy to do that one day. Uh, I would love to. It's really something I'm passionate about. But if you wanna just know the elements of it, the very bare bone basics that you should know and have, I always say logo and tagline, Nike, just do it. Everybody knows it the minute you see it. 
colors and text. Now this is important because anytime you scroll through a newsfeed or look at someone's web website, you want the text and colors to be consistent. It creates a certain sense of recognition when they see your product. Like McDonald's, anytime you see those golden M's, you know it. You don't have to even see the name McDonald's, you'll know it's McDonald's. That's the kind of mindset you wanna have plugged into people's minds. Um, imagery. Imagery is also part of a brand. If you're a happy brand, you want a lot of happy images. If you're a sad brand, you want a lot of sad images. It'd be very strange if you're cross-referencing each other and not building a consistent brand with your marketing and images. Build a voice. If you ever go to Chick-fil-A, it's one of the best things. They will always say, my pleasure. They will always be upbeat. They'll always be optimistic. That's their voice. If you have a strong company, you ensure your brand ambassadors, which is the next thing, your employees and your team have a specific voice that they're putting out to their company, whether it's in face to face with the customer or if it's online in your marketing. If you're typing up a digital, like a post on social media, make sure that it meets the voice that you expect your company to have. It's professional and personable or is it likable and friendly? Think about that. Um, finally, your positioning, what makes you unique compared to anybody else and your promise. When someone walks in the door, when someone buys a product from you, what is your promise to them? That is essential in branding because you want that promise to be consistent across the board. Now, sometimes people think they have one promise, but really the perception of that promise is completely different. So if you need to do a survey to find out if your promise is being met, if you've been in business for a while and you're thinking about it, reach out to your consumer, ask them. But you want to have a strict promise. Like I promise if you come to my business uh, with Equiturn, I always go above and beyond to give you a unique, unique, customized approach. No business is the same. And I promise you'll get something different just for you. And I promise you'll get a very hands-on approach. Um, and if it doesn't happen that way, then I try whatever I can to adjust to meet that promise. And feel free, again, type any questions you have. If I can hit them throughout, I'll try to. If not, I will come to them at the end. Um, the next up is social media. But once you know your audience, once you know your, your branding, you want to put it out into the world. And this is when you want to think of what platforms actually resonate with my consumer. Because not every platform is actually for your company. A lot of people think, like, let me set up for everything under the sun and hopefully I'll hit someone who likes me. No, there's actually specific markets and audiences and, uh, and opportunities from different platforms. And I even have some that I didn't list here, and I'll touch on them in a moment. But for example, you have Facebook which is more B2C, that's business to consumer, um, really great for those types of sales. What's unique about Facebook more than anything is you're allowed to have groups. Um, you can host events, which is really, really helpful, especially um, there's been a lot of people who are actually hosting Zoom calls like this, and you can put that on on an event for your business. Uh, and also something that I like to talk about with Facebook, it seems to be an older demographic, but I will say I love Facebook. Everybody who's my friends are Facebook. So that older demographic is really from like the mid 20s all the way up. Um, under the 20s, uh, 25, they start bleeding into what I call Instagram, uh, which is much more within that generation, the millennial generation. Uh, there's a lot of people on Instagram, though. A lot of businesses have Instagram. It's huge for B2C as well if you're a product-based company. Imagery is ideal here. If you're not, I mean, you can't post without an image and you want to make sure your imagery isn't just a, a promotion. If you're just posting ads on Instagram, you're not doing Instagram justice. Uh, if you're planning on doing it the right way, you should be creative, find photos that would resonate with your audience that are intriguing and engaging and get them to comment. Um, that's, that's the real benefit of, of Instagram and also stories, doing the short videos on your stories. Very powerful on Instagram. Twitter, um, that's B2C as well. Uh, very much a stream of consciousness though and information. Uh, it's meant for people that are literally giving out data or highlights or information on a frequent basis and wanna engage with their audience as often as they can throughout the day. It's a very broad demographic. It goes from young all the way to older ages. It's a big mix. Um, next up is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is amazing for B2B, and it's amazing at being very strategic at finding professionals in different fields. I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn, uh, especially when you take advantage of their other resources like LinkedIn and Sales Navigator. When you take on some of those additional platforms, you can get people's personal contact information from LinkedIn. You can search very specifically what company, what employees, which, which position, just to find those specific individuals that you wanna reach out to. Uh, LinkedIn is amazing for the direct contact. It's especially for the demographic of business owners, employees, industry leaders, uh, from college age all the way to uh, mature professionals, especially um, for LinkedIn, because when you're in college, they actually request that you sign up for it and push you to do it. 
And last but not least on this list, but I will touch on a few other ones, is Snapchat. Snapchat is amazing for B2C sales. It's much more for the Gen Z, Gen X, Gen Y. The, the younger generation is really on Snapchat. You want to make sure you have a compelling story or educational tool or information you want to share. Uh, Snapchat is all about those short, quick, graspable videos uh, that people can resonate with. I, I also like to talk about um, TikTok, which is a new big craze. A lot of people are into TikTok right now. You can run ads on TikTok. So if you have uh, the skills to do the videos, TikTok is an amazing tool, especially if you got some funny or witty ways to share the message or the vision or the why of your business. That's, that's a play, great place to do it. Also YouTube. If you have the skills and are willing to do your own video editing or updating, YouTube is amazing at uh, sharing education or sharing tools or doing reviews. It's really a great tool and it's also great for ads as well. If you run Google ads, it might even show up on your YouTube if you select that uh, to show up on other people's pages. There's a lot of other platforms out there um, aside from these, but these I would say are the main focus ones. So if you're ever thinking about where to go or what should I touch on, this is where you wanna look. Um, these platforms are the big, best tools to touch on. Uh, and I see some questions coming in. I'll try to take a look really fast. Yes, when you do your promise, it is definitely something you state to your, uh, your customers. I say to post it at least somewhere, whether it's an intake form or the website, or even sharing it as a story. It's really an important tool to showcasing uh, to your customers what you hope to give them. Uh, it's your vision for what you're going to give them as your promise at the end of the day. Um, is the promise to, to stay to your customers. Yes, it is. It, it's definitely a great marketing tool, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of companies provide you with their promise whenever you see it on their pages. So I'm going to keep going on to our next slide. So when you're doing social media, be really efficient and effective at it. You want to build a content calendar because it is extremely difficult for even the best social media people to run their personal pages, their professional pages, and be posting on a regular basis. Uh, it's extremely, extremely difficult. I, I, not even the common person does it. Those people that are influencers, they have content calendars. Pretty much what it is, is taking like your regular Google calendar, but adding exactly what platforms you're gonna post, what the messaging is, what the image is, what the content is, all in one place, and then using tools to post it on all those platforms at the same time or at different times throughout the day. Also scheduling the times. So like if you're the, let's say you're the owner of your business, but you have a team of people or someone else that manages your social media marketing, require that person to build a content calendar because you should be reviewing everything that goes out. And if you're reviewing it in every minute of the day, it's probably eating your time. So a content calendar lets you actually build out the next two to three months well in advance. So you're ahead of the game and you're not even dealing with these headaches. Uh, you really want to be ahead of it, especially right now with coronavirus. In my mind, if, you, if you're doing this right, your messaging has a story, it has a strategy. Not just the strategy overarching for marketing, but the posts that you're doing themselves. You wanna do at least four posts a week. If you could do more, it'd be better. Some people say seven stories a day, which is really difficult for even the best of social media people. Um, also two paid posts a week. If you're gonna do paid advertising on social media, you wanna run at least two and test them against each other and see which one performs the best. That's the, that's the most efficient way to get the, the best leads. Because if you run one ad, you really don't know if it's working um, or if the message resonates better than another ad. A-B testing them is what they call it, is the best approach. Use platforms for developing content calendars with schedule posts. So if you look to the left, I put tools for creating content and posting, Hootsuite and Buffer. Um, there's another one I didn't write called Airtable. All three of those allowed you to create your own content calendar and schedule posts. Uh, Hootsuite, Buffer, I think, offers a free version up to like a certain number of tools unless it changed recently. Hootsuite is paid, but it's not that expensive. But what's great about these is you actually log into your accounts and then you literally schedule the post ahead of time on all of the different accounts at once. It, it saves you so much time. The only difference is that really is like Facebook and Instagram allows you to do that on only Facebook and Instagram, but if you use Twitter or other accounts, really Buffer and Hootsuite help allow you to add all of those accounts at once. And it allows you to look at it in one frame. It gives you good reporting. I mean, it's really a great tool. I see someone here, Mike, said he uses Buffer already. So uh, if you have any questions from someone you talk to on a regular basis, definitely turn to him. Also post at peak times um, and create engaging content. Uh, you wanna pick times of the day that you know your clients are at on. So if you're, let's say, attracting a busy work 
a working individual, businessman or businesswoman, you want to do it at the end of the day when they're home and resting it, or first thing in the morning before they leave the home, their house. If you're working with uh, stay-at-home moms and that's your target audience, you probably want to hit them in the middle of the day when their son or daughter is taking a nap. Those are the type of things where you have to think of those times. There are tools online that allow you to do that. Um, for some reason, I forget the name of it, and I'm happy to share it at the end of this call. I'll look it up. Um, but I think it's uh, Post Timer. But there is a, a tool that allows you to know what type of times a day are best. SEM Rush is another one that I recommend if you're looking for that. Um, also, when you're doing this, you need to come up with really engaging and beautiful content. I'm talking about really nice images with your logo on them or flyers, or if you're going to do a promotion, you want a really beautiful content. Um, Canva is amazing. This is literally me giving away my job to you. If you're ever thinking of hiring a graphic designer, don't do it. If you're, if you're comfortable enough to using a computer and maneuvering and learning a new tool, Canva is the easiest thing to do. You can create portfolios, you can create Instagram posts, you can create video templates, um, presentations. I mean, it's ridiculous how much Canva offers for free. It is unbelievable. If you haven't used it already, I highly recommend it. Uh, you can create everything under the sun. It is truly an amazing tool. You won't need a graphic designer again for a very long time. Uh, and then also videos go way further on Instagram, on Facebook than uh, just an image. So if you're thinking about creating something unique, try to use Ripple or iMovie, which gives you really great tools to cut and paste and create to do videos for your social media. Uh, it's funny when I say iMovie, most people are like, oh, it's like the one on my app. People make feature films with iMovie. It's, it's actually been put out into theaters, iMovie made films. So if you're comfortable, again, learning, iMovie is unbelievable. You don't need a video production team to do it. You can hire one, but you don't need it. I hope that kind of touches on posting and content calendars. Next up, if you don't have a website, which I'm sure many of you do, it's really important to take advantage of a website development tool to build a really engaging, innovative, and powerful tool to engage your audience online that will also get organic reach, which is really important. A lot of times uh, individuals build websites, but it's not probably built to generate leads online. So some of the websites, I, I, web developers, excuse me, that I offer here on the left, uh, give tools to support you to accomplish that. So Wix is my favorite. I recommend it across the, across the board. It's one of the best tools that I've used. Super user-friendly for someone who doesn't know how to build a website or has never done it before. Very easy to use. Uh, it also offers you really great SEO support. You can put shopping carts on there, services, ca uh, bookings on there, everything you can imagine. WordPress is also great. It's one of the most common ones. A lot of people use WordPress. It's the most easy to adapt on the back end with coding. So if you know how to code, that's a great one for that. GoDaddy offers it. Weebly is another one. Weebly is really good. Shopify is very much an e-commerce tool. I see someone wrote Squarespace here. Uh, David, you're spot on. Squarespace is another one really great for e-commerce. Um, there's a lot of different options out there. I just, I vouch for Wix. Uh, I vouch for Wix just because of how easy it is to use. Uh, and also Shopify for e-commerce side. Uh, but there, Squarespace is definitely a good tool to use as well. Um, so must-haves, if you don't have a website right now, or if you do have a website even, and just have the time to update it because everyone is looking at websites and purchasing off of sites, especially right now, make sure you have an about us page, a vision, mission, and values page, and that can be on the same one, uh, a team page. Who is it that's involved? Even if it's just the CEO, that creates this brand uh, relationship that you look for. Services and products page, of course, if you're doing e-commerce, contact us, very important. Lead form or sales funnel. So the minute they hit your page, that they request information. Or once they get to a certain point, it says move now. And having that button to generate a lead of information with emails, phone numbers, and name is the most important. Testimonials and results. If you don't have those now, run a survey. You can use SurveyMonkey or Google Forms to do this. But run a survey of your audience and get some testimonials. Or ask personally. Especially now, everyone's home. They're looking for a reason to help somebody out. So if you say to them, listen, my business I'm trying to, it is struggling a little bit. I'm trying to overcome what's going on right now. Would you be able to give me a testimonial about the work that we did together back in the day? Definitely capture those um, and put them on your website. It gives a, a create a, a brand trust between your new customers and your current your past customers. Consistent branding. That means the color, the text, the logo, the, the voice across the board. You want to create a mobile version. It's stated actually that 80% of people now use a mobile version over anything else. 
So what I like about Wix and the reason I recommend it is they actually allow for a very quick um, mobile version view where you can just edit the mobile version right on your phone, on your computer, excuse me. So I, that's why I say Wix, but mobile version is essential. If you don't have a mobile version of your phone, of your website that looks clean and nice, it, it's not an effective website. I would recommend going back to the chopping block and redoing it a little bit. Blogs and videos. The reason I say blogs and videos is because of that organic reach that I was talking about a minute ago. If you're comfortable writing an article and can write one once a week or every other week, I mean, I challenge you even to do this, honestly. Write an article once a week on Friday morning before you even start your day when you're just getting out of bed or, a bed or just having your coffee in the morning. Write that quick 30 minute article. Every word that's in there, if you pick keywords that resonate with your customer, if they're looking for you on Google, you will more than likely get them to come to your page for free just by having those keywords. Like if you go to our website, I try to write a blog every other week at least, um, or at least once a month if I miss the, the weekly one. And we also do business tips of the week every single week to put out to our customers. And I write a write up at the bottom of it every single time. Because anytime you look up team management, uh, marketing, uh, search optimization, all of those words are in the article that we've written. It really makes a huge difference. And last but not least, make sure your website is set up with Pixel or Google. Um, Pixel is the Google way of, uh, or Facebook way, excuse me, of, of tracking who goes to your website from your Facebook profile or Facebook ads. Google is the same thing. Anybody who hits from Google on any of the ads or advertising, you want Google Analytics on your site. Also, what's great about Google Analytics, it does an overarching analysis. It'll tell you in general, no matter who it is, who went to your site, when they were on your site, how often they were on each page. All of that is a huge help to knowing if you're, you're being effective with your website or if it was built the right way. And I'll talk about some of those analytics in a moment when I get to the next slide, I think, uh, or the next two slides. I'm just looking over here. Someone on here actually uses Canva. So that is awesome. Eugenia, you said you did. So if you have any questions about that, definitely go. Uh, it's Eugenia to ask. Um, and Maggie, that's amazing that you guys are using so much, so many different marketing tools. It's very, very important, uh, especially in a little bit when I talk about it. You want to do like this, uh, what we call is omni-channel marketing. You want to hit individuals that, that are your target audience on multiple platforms. So definitely take advantage of not just doing social media marketing, but having a website and doing email campaigns and email marketing. The best way to get somebody is they see an ad on social media or Google. They go to your website. Maybe they put something in the shopping cart and they don't buy it or they think about booking and they don't do it. You take their information, you capture it and you send them an email and retarget them with another social media ad. That's a sales funnel. That's how you target them with multiple touches to get them to close. So if you're not doing email campaigns now, I strongly recommend developing it. It's a great way that if someone did put something in their shopping cart and you see what it was, you can offer them a promotion immediately for the thing they put in their shopping cart and didn't buy. You can literally give them $5 off or 10% off just to get them that extra hook to say, all right, maybe I will take the bite and buy this. So we do that all the time and we've seen uh, a return in, in people that have been to our site by up to 30% just by hitting them with additional targeting, just by them touching on the site. So what I always say is try to schedule a weekly or bi-weekly email campaign aside from these direct campaigns of marketing whenever you have someone hit your site. Uh, try to review open rates to improve the content. So if you're putting out an email marketing piece and you're not looking at how often people are opening or unsubscribing, you're actually not doing yourself justice in the fact that you might be writing something or developing a very long email template that no one is looking at and you're spending so much time every week building it. It's not because what you're doing is not good. It's just it might be too long or the messaging might not resonate and you need to change the messaging. So look at the past few emails you've sent and really analyze how often are people opening it and how often are people unsubscribing from it. Use MailChimp or Constant Contacts. Now there's a lot of other ones out there. Again, I'm just recommending the ones I know and that I've worked with frequently, but I know a few other ones that exist. But MailChimp and Constant Contacts are great because they offer, both of them offer a free version. Constant Contacts over a little bit, for a few months actually does charge you, but MailChimp up to 2000 contacts is completely free. They offer built-in templates that you can easily edit every week and recreate every week too. Uh, I really, I really like to stress doing at least one monthly newsletter and then saving a bi-weekly one that's more of like a promotional email. Google advertising is the next big one that everyone's pretty com uh, uh, familiar with. So like I said, you want to hit people with multiple platforms. Google advertising is the next big one. It, for most businesses, unless you're selling a product, 
I like to say that Google advertising is the best option to get people to look at your site and potentially book or service. This can be AdWords, which is pay-per-click. That's when you literally choose specific terms or phrases that you select on a list. And if someone hits that phrase and clicks your link because you showed up on the page, you pay for that click. Uh, with these words though, make sure they're exact phrases. Don't just do, um, I don't know if I was looking for somebody, adrenaline junkie, I keep bringing up the, the, um, the, the adventure company. But if let's say adrenaline junkie is a key term that someone would look up if they were to look for your business. They, if you don't make it a, a specific phrase, someone can find junkie and adrenaline separately. So if someone was searching like, how do I help my junkie friend? They will find your website and you will pay for it if they by mistake click on your link. Compared to if you make it an exact phrase, which is adrenaline junkie. So just there's ways to be more specific with it um, to ensure that you're not ending up on lists that you shouldn't be ending up on. Also, a big mistake that I've seen a lot of people do with this and just is like tips and tricks. When they put their name in, their exact name into AdWords, they get charged for every time someone clicks their link. But if someone is searching your exact name, like my, my company's name is Aquaturn. If someone has searched Aquaturn specifically, they know what they're looking for. There's not many other Aquaturns out there. So if I put it into Google as a paid ad, every time someone searches my exact name, I'm paying for it when I really shouldn't. So just be cautious of that. A lot of companies do that without realizing it just by putting names in. The next one is SEO. This is very much the organic side of it. This is called search engine optimization. The best way to, to look at this is to go through your websites, content and information, and to change the words and key terms on there. So that if, again, just like I said before, if someone searches a key term on Google and you have it within the titles of your pages or the context of your pages or within the explanations of the images, it is more likely to show up on Google for free. So change all the language inside your site to really be language that you think someone will be searching you on. That, that's search engine optimization at its best. There's also ways to like really optimize it where you're analyzing what your competitors' words are and what words you need to take over and how much of the market you've taken over because of those terms. But really SEO is all about writing the blogs and changing content on your page to meet that need. Um, this is really the, the best bet. The, also with Google AdWords, there's also something called Google Ads. It's run within Google AdWords, but it's when you can actually put pictures and banners that'll pop up on the sides of websites and panels and on YouTube videos if someone's searching. So if you're thinking about putting Google into your advert, into your strategy that you build for your company, think about doing both AdWords and ads. It's worth it because that's how you get the multiple targets. So if someone searches for a specific term, you can retarget them with an ad on a website when they start looking at it. It's a way to kind of double dip and hit them more than in more than one place. Seven touches is what gets the difference of actually closing a deal. So I'm going to go to the next one. This is, this is the information that I honestly, I could probably do an entire hour and a half presentation just on this. Understanding analytics and learning how to refine and retarget them is the golden ticket. To, to marketing. This is why I always recommend to individuals that if you're just starting out, test it out for yourself, learn it, understand it, and then hire a marketing form, firm, excuse me, or partner with a marketing firm you trust to be able to build it for you. Just because if you don't understand the analytics, again, it's like driving a car blind. You're really spending a bunch of money online, which at first, to be, uh, to be totally honest with you, it takes at least a month to two months of spending money for you to actually understand your marketing. Sometimes you spend a lot, even marketing firms, it takes at least a month because you figure out what words work, what words don't work. You, that A-B test you do, you pick the A or the B is the best one. So be prepared to spend some money, but if you're not looking at analytics at all, you're gonna be burning a lot more cash than you should be. Because what you're supposed to do is refine and refine and refine. So like when you run your target audience, if you're looking at the analytics, you'll know if certain age ranges aren't clicking. You'll know if certain interests are not clicking or values are not clicking or they're clicking and they're not buying. So you want to remove those as quickly as you can to get your target audience and your messaging and your content as specific as possible. Because once you find something that works and sells, work it, work it, work it and retarget with new ads to the same audience. So that's why you want to know your analytics. That's how you learn, refine and then retarget. That's what that means. So more specifically, if you're going to be doing tracking analytics, you can utilize these different softwares. Google Analytics has theirs, which I've talked about. Instagram is Instagram Insights. 
Twitter is Twitter Analytics, Facebook is Facebook Pixel, and if you're using influencers, which are people with large followings on social media, then you probably wanna use a tool called Influencer Scores, which allows you to track how much they're actually selling and what they've actually brought to the table when it comes to brand awareness. If you are gonna take this seriously and are ready to invest some of the money into it, different dashboards make it a lot easier. Um, especially when it comes to managing multiple platforms in one place, like you could take all those different tracking systems and put them into one platform. If you use one of these dashboards, so you have Quintly, which is a social analytics one. Um, there's Sprout Social, which I didn't put here. Um, it's a more recent one, but Sprout Social, it's, it's really taken up a lot of traction in the space. Mixpanel does Google and web analytics really well. Brand Watch, that's more for if someone comments online and says uh, like on Yelp or on Google or on Facebook and puts a good or bad comment out there, you wanna use um, Brand Watch so you can respond to them quickly and review them and remove them if you have to. HubSpot, like I was talking about before, they're one of the leaders in this. They have content calendars, they have posting calculator or cal calendars, excuse me, and they also create an analytics dashboard where you can put everything in one place. It's just a little expensive, but it has it all. And then finally, Yext is the same thing. It's very similar to Sprout Social and HubSpot, where it's all the analytics in one place with a content calendar. When you're looking at the analytics, these are five different things that I always stress to know about. Uh, the last one is one that you hear all the time, but is not as essential, to be totally honest. The most important ones are the top ones. CTR, which is click-through rate. This is how often, if you run an ad, someone actually clicked it and ran to your website. Whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Google, CTR is your click-through rate. So how often someone clicks on the ad and gets to it. Conversion rate is your money one. This one's the one that you really want to know. If a marketing company is not giving this to you, you better push up for it because this is what actually matters. This is how often is someone actually converting into making a purchase. So out of all the money you spent, what's your rate? How many people are actually generating a, a sale? And usually what you do is you take the amount of money you spent uh, over the amount of people that have purchased and you run, get a rate out of that. Your KPIs, which you can set with your team or on these brand watch dashboards, or excuse me, the management dashboards, is your key performance indicators. What are specific numbers that matter to you most that you wanna see? How many ads they clicked on, how often are they converting? Uh, really what matters is if you're doing a, a campaign where you're trying to make sales or generate leads, then your conversion rate matters. If you're just trying to get build a brand and awareness and get people to understand who you are as a company, then your click-through rate really matters. Does that make sense? You're kind of separating the two. Um, Next up is pay-per-click, which I talked about briefly. Again, if you have a specific term uh, that you're going for and every time someone clicks on it, that's when you get charged. You don't get charged if it shows up, you only get charged if it gets clicked on. On a lot of the ads on social media, you're getting charged when someone just looks at it. On the ones for Google, most of the time you're only getting charged when someone clicks on it. That's the difference really. On social media, most marketing firms, most teams will tell you reach, mentions, and impressions. Reach is really great. I like reach. Reach means that someone actually commented um, or liked or hearted or put something on your, on your post. That means they actually engaged with you. Mentions is even better. That's when someone on social media actually mentions your company because of an ad. They shared it or they did something along those lines. Impressions to me, and excuse my language, are complete shit. Um, I hope I can say those words. But uh, the reason I say that is because all that is is when someone scrolls and just sees your ad and then scrolls by it. They don't actually like look at it, like engage with it or comment on it or do anything, they're just scrolling. So a lot of firms are gonna say, I can promise you impressions. Great, that doesn't do much. So really try to push them to get you conversion rates and CTRs. It's hard to promise conversion rates and click-through rates, to be totally honest. It's very hard to promise leads. Uh, that's really contingent on how much money you spend. That's also for yourself, whether it's through a firm or not. The more money you spend, the more likely it is that you can guarantee someone's actually converting on your ads. I hope uh, you understand that. That's, it's just hard to say because a lot of times it's the refining and testing and, and narrowing it down to be able to be effective. Now, you don't have to spend a lot, though. If you're a small business making, let's say, $150,000 to $300,000 a year, you could spend 10% of that and be totally fine. That's the golden number, by the way. 10% is really what you're trying to go for when it comes to overall revenue. So if you want to be a million dollar business, you got to spend 10% of that to generate the sales you want to get to. That's the golden number. Most people start lower, though, and build up to it. 
So I see some people are talking here. I got ROI is critical also. Yes, return on investment. So that's when I think of ROI, I think of conversion rate. That's when someone to me, when someone converts over, they are my return on investment. They bought. It. But it depends on the type of campaign you have. If you're doing branding or if you're doing um, if you're doing sales, that's your ROI. If you just want people to look at your page, if you get a thousand people to go to your website, great. That was a great ROI. If you're trying to make sales and you got to get a thousand people to buy, that's your conversion rate. That's worth it. So just keep those in mind. Um, KPI is your conversions. You can set those though. You can set those independently. If you're doing direct and indirect marketing, the most important numbers are the KPI and conversion rates. Correct. Absolutely, Maggie. Um, engagements are great. Um, Tony, I, I believe Tony, you're absolutely right. You want to utilize engagement. Uh, that's where the reach comes from. That's that's a good thing. That means you're building a brand. If people are engaging and talking about your product, it means you've resonated with them directly. Um, yeah, <laughs> impressions and reach is old school. You're absolutely right. What matters your conversions and click through rates. Uh, you know, a lot of people try to say convert reach and impressions is gold and you need it. Uh, it's not as true. Reach is great if you're doing the brand side of it, but if you're trying to sell something online, what really matters is your conversion rate. Um, and SEO and SEM, I'm going to touch on that a little bit, Peter. I got you on that shortly. So sales and lead generation. When I talk about actually building a strategy, a major part of that is actually creating the funnel of communication through the ads and marketing you're doing. And I'll tell you what the levels of the funnel are, and I'll tell you what I would suggest as potential places where you can put certain types of marketing. Uh, but again, it's up to you and up to your business and how you're doing. So, so the biggest one is awareness. So that's first and foremost. That's building a brand, connecting with your audience, pushing a specific content out to the target market. Uh, this is usually when you're putting out funny videos, funny pictures, relatable content, educational information. Uh, this is usually on social media. This is where you build your awareness. Uh, most people are looking at you at that point. Interest is when you actually identify those that appeared interested and you retarget them for the sale. So a lot of times interest is where Google comes in as well. Sometimes awareness is where Google is because someone's just trying to research a topic, but interest is when you start hitting them with a retargeting campaign where you're actually saying to them, if you bought this, it'll impact you in this way. This is my why, and this is why you should invest in purchasing my product or purchasing my service or engaging with my business. This is the first time you're like, all right, let, let's buy into what I'm doing. Not just who am I, it's what am I. Drive the sale. That's the decision. This is when you close the deal. So after you get their interest, most of the time you have them clicking a button either to purchase a product immediately or to end up at a landing page where they enter their personal information. So that's where the decision opportunity is. They get to the page on your website or a landing page and they say, okay, am I going to buy into this? Am I going to give my information? Usually you want to set up a custom landing pages. Google offers a feature to do that if you're on Google Suite. Adobe has a great feature for landing pages. Wix does a great feature for landing pages, WordPress does. You want like an independent page specifically to what your campaign is. So if you're selling a certain product, you want a page just about that product. It could be linked to your main site, but that's what you're trying to sell. And you wanted them to know either put your information in or buy my stuff or schedule a consultation. That's your decision. Action is when they close the deal. Now, if some consumers are not gonna close the deal at this moment. So what I always say is awareness is social media, interest is the Google AdWords and Google campaigns and the retargeting through social media. Decision is the landing page and you're testing a few landing pages. Action is the email marketing. And again, the follow up with the purchase now. This is usually a very much like buy here, click one button and you, it's yours. That, that's the immediate action. And I usually do that within an email or through another marketing campaign on social media. Um, if I do it through an email, I really like to provide some kind of promotion so they're incentivized. I've also done it on social media, but that's really a specific retargeting campaign that you have to build. So. Correct. What you do with your ad is awareness, interest, then decision making. That's the process. It's always that step by step. They say that it takes seven touches to get someone to buy. So what I like to say is you have at least three to four different ads where they see one ad, they seem interested because they engaged with it, either commented or clicked on it, went to your website, did something. Hit them with another new ad that educates them even deeper about the product and how they can actually buy it or get engaged with it. Then hit them with another ad that has to do with how they can really gain from the experience just by clicking on and getting to their your page and trying to collect their data. That's, that's kind of the process. You want a few different ads to hit them. So some insider tips. 
right now with everything going on with the crisis, I'm just going to share with you some of the stuff that we're doing to stay ahead of the game and help some of our clients strategically, uh, especially when it comes specifically to marketing. So some areas that we touched on. We've been doing a lot of support when it comes to news interviews and press releases, uh, developing press releases, creating news interviews, because people are watching the news left and right. Uh, they're scrolling through their feed looking for current events. So if you can be a part of it, if your business can share the, your story during this crisis, uh, it's really a great chance to do it, to tell a little bit more about what you're going through or what you're doing to be resilient and overcome it. A great tool for that is also to do community service and education, like literally what I'm doing right now. I'm not charging in any way. I don't have any intention of doing it. I don't even care. None of you end up calling me after the fact. I really just love the fact that while all of this is going on, I can help out. That's what matters. I, I really think that if you can go out there and think about your business and what you can do to help, a lot of people are hurting right now. And if everybody helps somebody, it'll make a difference and it'll help you get ahead of the game. Every client that I'm working with, I'm always thinking about what is one thing you can do to help out right now? Because more people want to see you help than try to push a certain product or service in front of them. Um, shoot a video of protocols. So a lot of things that I've been stressing to my clients is that even after this passes, I'm gonna, this comes up in the next bullet too, even after this is all over, people are still gonna be somewhat nervous and conscious. And if you have a brick and mortar store, a store especially, people are still gonna be nervous walking in the door. So you wanna do some kind of a video or informational tool to educate people about what you're doing that's different. What are your cleaning SOPs or standard operating procedures or protocols that you've created to go above and beyond to protect your clients and protect your staff? It's really crucial. And if you put a message out there to the world now, they'll feel more comfortable later when the doors do open. Or if you're selling a product delivery, it's really good to show them, hey, don't be worried when it comes to your door. I've done everything I can to protect you and your, and your, your family. It really is, um, I've, I've seen it be very effective at creating a brand loyalty and brand relationship. And I'll show you an example of that in just a minute, actually. Set up a digital or in-home system. Now this is do it now, but also do it for later. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of people because there's so many articles about what you can do now to survive, but what are we going to do day after COVID is over? The day after this is all said and done, I literally wrote a blog about it, I'm going to put it out there. You, you want to be ready now for when that day comes. So one of those things is, again, like I said a minute ago, people are not going to be enthusiastic to still come to stores or purchase products or invite you into their homes right away, unless you're thinking ahead of the game of what you can do. So develop a system now that you can offer either digital services or delivery or online services, things like that. And what you would do for if you were to be able to go to an in-home system. Uh, so for example, if you're a barber or run a hair salon, think about what your company can do to actually go to them and assist them in their homes, do these services directly with them, but think about what precautions you might take to do that. Create a system with it and develop a protocol for your team. Uh, I would say to do it now even in after course. I think in general, uh, the audience and the community are gonna be struggling with the idea of going right back to the normal day to day, not right away at least. And last but not least, uh, use some EIDL funding. If you, economic and injury uh, disaster uh, loans, if you haven't applied for them, definitely apply for it. Uh, we put together an article about the different funds and options. If you're looking for it, you can look at our website, with some info out there. Uh, we're helping with some loan applications because honestly, I can't stress how important this is. If you can take that loan with a very low interest rate, you can apply it to your marketing, to your expansion of your business, and to help keep your business alive during all of this. So if you haven't applied for it yet, apply. It is very challenging, I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of delays in it, the funding's drying up, but if you can put it out there, even to build a new website, it's worth it. The IDL is a huge opportunity to do a lot of this marketing stuff if, if funding is tight. Last but not least is some promotions. I've been doing these promotions with my clients and if you're not thinking about doing them now, if you're gonna to put together a marketing strategy, try to apply some of these. Uh, run a promotion on incentives for past clients. So if you have a past client and you've started to do sales online, give them a discount for coming back and purchasing now. Create a loyalty program more than, more than ever now that will then bleed into your stores. If someone buys online, the minute your store's open, they get a discount. Uh, create that loyalty relationship and start getting some brand loyalty with your clients. The more you can do it now, uh, the more it'll help down the road. Online discounts for purchases. Uh, this is something I've been doing with all of my clients. We've just been running blanketed online discounts, 15% off anything you order online across the board. You want to go, this is a more general one, and then you want to give something even better to your past clients, like a free gift or something. Uh, but the online discounts, like even the Miami Heat right now is running a 30% off everything on their store, by the way, if you didn't know. If you happen to be in Miami. 
go to their website. So <laughs> they're running a special themselves. And then also, uh, this is more of like an education tool that can be within promotions. Cross market other partners in the field. Don't feel nervous to do that. Uh, support your other customer, uh, your other partners, excuse me, or strategic partners. So if you can write a blog or an article and link promotions and opportunities from some of your other partners in the field, they'll share your article on their site and maybe help you grow as a business as well. Like the blog I put together, I'm actually highlighting a lot of other, other companies and other individuals I even talked about here. Because really, the more I can help others, the more they'll help me. So before I move on to the next thing, I just want to play um, this short video. I think it'll open up in my screen. Yes, it will. This is just um, something that Burger King did. A really short, really sweet, it's 15 seconds, uh, but it literally shows you exactly what I mean when it comes to um, showcasing your business, excuse me, and telling individuals what you're doing that's different than the rest when it comes to So uh, I think that, um, I hope you guys could hear that clearly, but the idea is that uh, the even companies as big as Burger King are trying to think of how can I tell my audience that we're going above and beyond for them. We're protecting them, we're saving them, and they should come buy from us. I don't eat Burger King that often. Their Beyond Burger is pretty good, but I don't go that often. Uh, but the minute that I saw them put that out there, I was like, you know, if I was going to pick between McDonald's and Burger King, or if I was going to pick Taco Bell and Burger King, if I was going to eat fast food right now, I'm going to go to Burger King. Seems like they're actually putting in the effort to try. I don't know about you all, but I've gone through a few fast food places and when they're not wearing gloves and they're not wearing a mask and I don't really see cleanliness in the back, I do question it uh, before walking away. So if you have the time to look, I would, I would take the time to build your own video. Even if you do it at home, it could be from still images with text on it and your own voiceover. Anything you do to educate your clients now about what you're gonna do later or you're doing now even with delivery, I'm telling you, uh, it's powerful creates a really strong brand relationship, even if you don't go there. But Beyond Burger is great, thank you. Um, let me just go to our next slide. So this is my second to last slide. This is literally building your strategy. After taking everything I just taught you, how do you put it into place for your specific company? So first and foremost, set real goals. We talked about it, what are the different analytics you wanna reach? What are the sales you wanna get, leads you wanna generate, relationships you wanna build? Figure it out for yourself and do that now. As soon as we get off this call, uh, I know 10X is also all about like action and motivation and getting it done. Literally when we get off this phone call or off this video chat, I hope, I hope I'm motivated enough to say, you know what, I'm just going to do it. It's about damn time. Let me write down three goals I want to accomplish. I want to set up all these marketing platforms. I want to generate this many leads from it. And I want to execute by this day. Make it happen. Um, identify how your customer gets the information best. This is really important. Don't waste your money and time on so many different platforms. Like I talked about at the beginning, pick the platforms that matter at home with them, dive deep into them and just do those. Don't just try to blanket yourself because if your customer doesn't buy on all the different platforms, why waste your time on all the different platforms? Develop a step-by-step -step plan for launching your marketing. What is your specific process to get it out there? Like I said, I had a funnel. I had a process that I, I told you, I, I always start target audience, branding, platforms, messaging, putting it out to the masses through retargeting. That's my process. Build your own and put it into a step-by-step -step plan. Meet with your team and ensure everyone is on the same page. I can't stress this enough. If they're your brand ambassadors and you run an ad online and they're the ones answering the phones and they didn't know there was a 30% discount, that's a problem. If your company doesn't have any marketing online and no one knows you're about to launch it and then they start seeing what you're putting out there, that's a problem. Also, your team is your biggest advocate. If you start putting things out there, if you're planning a rebranding, or if you're planning more marketing in general, have them share it and highlight your business on their own pages. They'll own your brand if you train them about it. Set a launch date right now. When you set those goals, pick one of them as a launch date. Say, by this date, I'm going to launch all my marketing. If it's a week from now, a month from now, two months from now, just put the date on the calendar and hustle yourself to get there. Prepare all platforms and content for the next two months. I talked about a content calendar. The reason I say that is because it is very difficult to keep up with posting, like I said earlier. So put together a two month content calendar. Choose what are you gonna do over the next two months? Put together all the pictures, all the write-ups, schedule them, put the times in there, and then sit back and let it play out itself so you can start getting your actual business going and ready. 
And last but definitely not least, run tests and be willing to spend money to learn. Uh, I said it a little bit ago and I'm reiterating again now, it is hard sometimes to accept the fact that you're gonna have to spend money. In the first month, you will spend money that will not get the leads that you want them to get. But I promise you, after one month of learning and really focusing in and cutting out leads that don't matter or cutting out target audiences that don't matter, cutting content that doesn't matter, don't take it personally, but just get deep. After spending a little bit of money, it'll automatically flip itself and your cost for acquiring client or CAC will quickly lower just because you were willing to spend some money in the beginning to learn. So that's how I put together a strategy. That's how I'd be effective when I put together my work. Um, if you have any questions, I literally, I told Peter, I'm very much open to helping in general. It doesn't have to be to call me for service. If you just have a question, I'm happy to answer it. So shoot me an email if you have any questions. You can text me, that's my personal cell number, that's our office number, um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions now that you might have, you can type them in there. Um, thank you so much for all the positive info. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. The Instagram handle is Ron K, R-O-N-K, very simple. Um, it's, it should be easy enough to find. Love to have you guys. Oh, sorry. Actually, I am so sorry. I changed my Instagram handle literally a month ago and I got to remember it. It's R Crudo. It's just R and then my last name Crudo. K-R-U-D-O. And I'll type it in here actually so everybody has it. So important to remember. And then if you decide to look at our Equiturn one, it's EQT Solutions. Thank you. And I already got a tag from somebody on here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Who did that? Peter, you're the man. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, and if you have any questions, I know there's a recording of this and it's going to go out. I'm telling you, feel so comfortable to reach out to me. Eugenia, I really appreciate the fact that you reached out to me and asked me to uh, do this presentation. Uh, so if any of you have other groups or anywhere else that you would want me to do the presentation, I'd be happy to do it. Uh, really, I, I, I'm so open. I'm, I love sharing this information. It's something that everyone should know. If you're not in the digital age, it's so crucial you should be. You Great. guys rock. Uh, anybody has questions, please uh, feel free to ask. This is the moment. Mr. Troy, Eric, uh, Maggie, Eugenia, anybody else? Yeah, I'll start off with a question. Um, so Don't great know. presentation, that was excellent. Um, this is actually somewhat my space. I do some of this stuff uh, for my company, more so on the social media side. And then uh, we have another guy there that does, um, I guess the more involved things like the SEO, Google Analytics and all that fun stuff. Um, so I have a question, I actually did a course um, it was, uh, there's all these free courses that came out during the whole uh, coronavirus thing. People kind of like offering like 30 day free trials. Uh, Cardone did like a Cardone U 30 day free thing, mm -hmm. uh, whatever have you. So since I do a lot of the social media posting, um, so we post, they want me to post anywhere between uh, three to four times a day. So that's kind of like my target between three to four. I shoot for four usually daily. Um, so in the course, I found it interesting because they mentioned that like for like Twitter, Instagram, like all these different platforms to do a different post for each one. So we currently do now, so like I'll do the same post and I'll put it across the board like on all the different uh, platforms, like the same exact, uh, you know, whether it's a meme or a video, you know, whatever it is. Um, but then in the chorus, they said they should do like a different one, you know, depending on, on what, if it's Twitter. Or, so what, what's your take on that? Should it be like a different post depending on the platform or is it, uh, I mean, so far what we've been doing, it's been working, but I noticed like sometimes it'll hit more uh, as far as engagements, like with like the Twitter or the Instagram. So I, I do see a, a difference there, but uh, I mean, I don't know. What's, what's your take on that? No, definitely. First of all, I commend you for doing that many posts a day. It is not easy. So I really respect that. It is the hardest thing. I love it. I, I, I try to do a lot of posts a day every day too, but lately on quarantine, I've been bad about it. So if you're looking at my page, I'm sorry. Uh, but I do think it's really important. The, my opinion on that actually is it is, they're, they're right. It is really good to do different content on different pages. What I always say though, is personally speaking, I, my company focuses on small businesses. So I kind of relate to the small business entrepreneur and I know that it's not easy to do. If you're, if, unless you do the content calendar the way I talked about it, and really it's, it's still not easy. You're building like 40 posts a month to get them on different platforms. The reason it is beneficial though, 
if I were to talk about the general beneficial benefit, uh, overarching benefit of it, excuse me, um, is the fact that your audience is different on each platform, like I talked about earlier. So if you change your message by platform, you're more likely to get more likes. Also, if someone sees the same post on every single platform, they're less likely to follow you on every platform. If they start to know that you're just going to post the same thing everywhere. They're not going to follow you everywhere or you won't come up on every page. So what I, I do agree with them. I, I do um, second the idea of trying to do different content, but it's not easy. And I, I'm willing to accept that. If you're up for the challenge though, if you set up your content calendar well in advance and you spend the two days it takes to really build it the right way, you can do it. You can really do it. It's just, it's, it's not easy though. And that's why I say Buffer and Hootsuite by the way, because it does that. It literally will post across the board to all the platforms at once. Um, and it's more for the, the solo entrepreneur or someone who doesn't have somebody else managing their stuff is what I always say. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I do most of them, you know, just from following, you know, previous things that we've done, things that, uh, you know, have been successful as far as engagements, but yeah, I'm going to check out, I was kind of playing with a, a Canva canvas the other day a little bit. Um, yeah. that, that was cool. It's, it's, uh, it's got some, 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 you know, cool graphics and some, uh, some neat stuff in there, but I'm going to check out the other ones you mentioned. So thank you. Nice. Yeah. Tony play with Canva. <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. I'm telling you, you will never need another graphic designer. <laughs> nice. Of course. Thank you for the question. I appreciate it. Thank you. Guys, like I always say, we got an expert here in the house. So take advantage um, that he is uh, here ready to answer any questions you guys may have. And, uh, you know, like I could almost identify with 95% of everything that he said, um, you know, so got the real deal, real deal here, guys. So uh, take advantage. Anybody, Thank you, Tony. Anybody. I saw someone did ask a question, Eric did, about how do I price my services to customers and clients? Um, to be honest, it depends on the different platforms and the amount of services that are needed. If, uh, if you're asking for email marketing, digital marketing, and Google advertising, that's when the prices come up. Uh, we do try to do a flat management fee, though, and then just allow to give you a suggested advertising fee. So I just I figure out how much you need overarching. We set up one monthly flat management fee that goes every month. Um, and then if you need extra posts or you need an additional slide or things aren't working on one platform and we double down on another platform, we usually adjust that way. Um, and then we just give a suggested advertising budget. Wonderful. Uh, I think also Maggie has a question. Yeah. Yes. What are the most important in sales between the KPI or conversion rate? So with sales, I always go off a of conversion rate. Now the difference is though, and this is where I, I'm actually an operations and marketing guy, just so you guys know my yeah. background. Yeah. So, so, so that's why I was asking, what is the difference between the KPI and the conversion rate when you're in a sales platform? Definitely. Okay. So when you're in a sales platform, the KPI is the more central one because there are a lot of things that if factor an actual sale, like marketing people know that. And that's why they always say, I can't guarantee sales and leads because if the product isn't good or the service isn't strong or the website isn't powerful and I didn't build the website and fax it. So what I always say for the company side, KPI is way more important. You set up your key performance indicator. You say my best performance on my end, at least on the business side, when I talk about it, is that I converted that lead and turned it into a sale because they may need to talk to my sales manager and my sales manager closes the lead. If you're doing it for the marketing side, though, your conversion rate is way more important. How often are you converting them into a sale is what, what really matters on the marketing side. So when someone comes to me and asks me, what's my conversion rates, that's what I can actually provide them. That's people that have converted into a lead or converted into a purchase by a click on a website um, to buy the product. And I can show those numbers through my, my analytics. Like Google will show you a conversion rate. Facebook will show you a conversion rate. KPIs is what I've seen is more of an internal business measurement um, that you can relate to your marketing team with, but it's more of an internal thing. Uh, because there are other factors that go in sometimes to closing a sale. Um, and by the way, someone asked me about SCM and SEO earlier. I apologize, Peter. I think it was you. Uh, and I overlooked it briefly. I, I thought I was going to bring it up later on, but I, I removed that slide, so I apologize. So the difference is, is when I was talking about Google Ads and Google AdWords, so Google Ads is SEM. It's search engine um, for management and marketing. The idea is that whenever you run an ad, if someone searches for a key term, and then there's the option to buy products on the right-hand side because they searched the best athlete foot remedy, let's say. I don't even know why that came to mind. Let's say it was the athlete's foot remedy and you sold, sold a lotion like that. That's the, that's the SEM when it shows up as an image as an option to purchase on the side or a banner. Um, SEO is the words within your website or the words within the images on your website or the videos on your website or the blogs and articles you write that show up organically when someone searches for you. 
that's the difference between the two. Uh, and if you're nice. really looking to be in the major leagues, there's this thing called SEM Rush. Uh, we as a marketing firm um, own it, and we not own it, excuse me, have a license to it. Uh, but we run reports on different websites and platforms to analyze both their SEM and their SEO. So if you're ever looking for a tool like that, I trust it is a great tool. We have a few more questions. I think Mr. Troy also uh, raised his hand earlier. So let's allow Mr. Troy and then uh, John has a question and uh, let's try to see who else. Mr. Troy? Uh, hi, good talk? evening. Um, yes, yeah, awesome presentation uh, from one market to another. Um, very solid content. Um, you would have made a recommendation in terms of uh, persons using third party um, tools to schedule. Um, I have personally found um, using third party to schedule on um, platforms like Facebook um, are, are being penalized as it relates to the organic reach. Uh, have you found that to be the case also? Uh, I have. <laughs> yeah, no, you just, I have. <laughs> Algorithms, al yeah, I know you're absolutely right, Troy, and I know you're a marketing guy, I can tell. So uh, the, unfortunately, yeah, the algorithms, and this is something that's funny actually, because one day it'll hurt and one day it won't, because the algorithms, um, I'm sure you've probably heard the term before, across the board, I know you know, Troy, but across the board for anybody else who's here, um, Facebook, Google, um, Instagram, all of them have different algorithms that allow for your ads to show up when you run them, depending on how likely it is, how engaging it is, how interesting it is, if they're actually gonna buy it, it as a difference. If you use a tool like Buffer or Hootsuite or any of those to post your ad across the board, Facebook and Instagram know you used it and they'll actually impact your algorithm and not let it bump up as high. Now, it won't disappear completely because then they'd go out of business because they'd be sued by so many people who spend money to post, but it doesn't perform as well. So that's why, like I said before, um, if you're just gonna use Instagram and Facebook, Troy, I'm sure you would say the same, use Facebook and Instagram to schedule it. They have a great service, you can do it right there, you can schedule both on one platform on Facebook, very simple to run. Um, they have a great ads manager account. If you create a business manager account for yourself and then an ads manager within that, it's really helpful. Uh, but if you don't have time and you're the busy CEO and want to schedule everything months in advance and include Twitter and other platforms, that's when I say Hootsuite um, might be a good addition to, to use. But yeah, Troy, you're absolutely right. Unfortunately, it does uh, impact you if you do use those tools. Is that Troy? Yeah, thank you very much, man. Continue to do good work. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I'd love to collaborate with you one day, Croy. Uh, we could definitely touch base a post uh, call if you'd like. And then I saw there was another uh, question from John. Um, what's important for starters in the marketing, the sales funnel or the email campaigning? So if, it, it's tough to say, I will tell you. It's, if you were to talk about what's more important, I would say the sales funnel because if you can really understand how to retarget your audience and run ads as a starter and be very successful at it, you're more likely to get more sales. I, so I really would say the sales funnel is the better tool. Email marketing tends to be a part of that. What's easier, if you're asking me what's easier, email marketing is for sure easier. It's way easier to build an email template, way easier to put a listserv in there and engage your marketing and your audience through emails. Uh, what I would say is this, if your audience is more likely to open emails, depending on your demographic, and if they've opened a lot of emails in the past that you've sent them, run with the email marketing, create a promotion, promotion because you can get it done quick and send it out to your market. If 80% if of people or 40% of people open that email, or sorry, 60% of people open that email, if you're in that range, spend the time on the email marketing. You're probably doing something right. If you have a different demographic that is very heavily on social media uh, and on digital marketing and Google searching, then I would say even though you're a starter, Take a little bit of time to study it. Uh, go start there, start there, because there's you'll get more success out of it and more sales. And I appreciate all the questions. I have to tell you, I, I love uh, the challenging questions too from all the people that I've experienced in this too. Uh, I think it's good to learn from each other and it's good to share. So if any of the experts here, by the way, Troy, if you want to jump in with some more advice or have any insight, or Tony, if you have anything else, because I know you've posted before, feel free. Uh, I'm all about mastermind and collaboration, so I don't I don't take any 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 shame in it. There's a lot of different tools and a lot of different ways of doing things in, in marketing. Um, it's funny. I like to say that it's like a, it's almost like a wizard or sorcerer's trait. Everyone's got their own skills in it. If you know what you're doing, you can be really 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 creative with it. Let me tell you. 
is this what you do uh, Ron? like like uh, full time you you do like branding and uh, and marketing or is that like your your role right now for your for your uh so I oversee our marketing team. I have individuals who actually do the branding and marketing on the team. I oversee it. My, my role um, is more to come in and do the management operations and strategy for marketing. So developing the sales funnel and big picture strategy and messaging. And then I have my team execute on the strategy. Uh, so I have a team of people that specialize in content creation and specialize in AdWords and uh, digital marketing. So we're kind of divide and conquer when it comes down to it. The way we, if you want to know a little bit more, and I'm not trying to do a promotional pitch, I promise. Uh, the way we function when we work with businesses, we can do one part of our services, like only marketing or only finance. But we found that when we offer our consulting services that other firms don't do is we actually go in with a management specialist, a finance and accounting specialist, and a marketing specialist as a team. And we help support the business from all angles. So that's why um, I have a specialty in, in management operation. That's my master's and my background, but I have a strong uh, skills and, and education in marketing just because it's my passion. So uh, we kind of work in teams like that. And that's with, uh, with Equiturn Business Solutions, correct? Correct, yeah. Got it. 10 4. Thanks, Tony. Uh, what was your biggest obstacle since you've been with Equiturn and what did you do to overturn it? Ooh, that's a great one. Um, you know, if I have to be honest, and I think that as 10x people, you might understand this, sometimes uh, it's, it's hard to find the right people to fit the right roles. And I think there was, a, I've had a few challenges where I've hired individuals that I thought were going to be phenomenal uh, and it just didn't work out uh, one reason or another. Uh, and a lot of the times when you're working with clients and you're so hands-on with clients, you need people who not only think of the tool or the service or the practical execution of it, but also consider the client and their needs and, and what their specialty is. Like I said before, my real passion is to customize everything. That's my promise that my approach is different per business, depending on what you have, even if I work in the same industry, because every message, every why, every customer is different. So I try to find people who can understand and customize in their own way of doing things. And sometimes it's hard to get find that. Some people are very stuck in their ways. So I've, uh, I've, I've had some challenges with that. And I'd also say one of my other biggest obstacles, uh, which I think is, I'm sure all of you experienced, as an independent entrepreneur, um, it, it's not an easy market to work with, with uh, small business owners, because it's really important. They need immediate action whenever they can get it. Uh, and they also need a lot of support and help. They have the weight of the world and their business on their shoulders. And as much as my team of experts comes in and helps, sometimes there's a lot to get done. And I think that as in general, when it comes to helping business owners, I think it's a, a lot of a part of this or a main part of this is understanding what their bigger picture goals or strategies are and focusing in on them uh, and helping them see that there is a way to get there. And it's not just a big weight on their shoulder. But they could take the weight off and lay out the bricks to make it. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to explain that. Sometimes people like to be under their weight, under their shoulders. And I don't know why, but I know that a lot of entrepreneurs sometimes are, are comfortable under that weight. So I try to take it off, but it's not easy every time. Sometimes it takes more than uh, just um, weight taking. Sometimes it takes a little bit of, um, I, th I think, like psychotherapy, psychology, psychology, and all the, I would say, uh, the mindset uh, tapping into uh, because uh, it, it's hard to take. I feel like a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs they learn a trick, and. Um, I will use this um, analogy with, um, with the dog, the old dog, that they have, have a trick and they keep doing the trick over and over and again. And if someone is trying to teach them a new trick, they're going to be like stuck in their mind and they don't want to learn something new. It's very, very true. It's all, a lot of it is mindset. A lot of it is mindset. I know, yep. I'm know. i sure you all know it. I, I've actually listened to a lot of uh, Grant Jones uh, videos and, and content, so just putting that out there. So I, I know that it is a lot of mindset. Uh, and I think sometimes uh, when I come in and partner with new business owners, I have to kind of help them step out and see it from my perspective or from an outside perspective, not even my perspective, from an outside perspective so that they can try to adapt their mindset and see that the opportunity is realistic if they just take the right steps to get there. Beautiful. I just want to jump in here and add, since you did invite me, this Troy here again, you didn't invite me to be able to share some views. One of the things that I have, I have found um, is that a, a lot of entrepreneurs have fallen in love with their, their own business and uh, as a result are resistant to change. So they need help, but 
they don't want to accept the help because it means having to change and in some cases it means having to part with some of the business functions and business activities that they're falling in love with <laughs> it's, I don't so find <laughs> <laughs> it's scary true the sad part is is when they they have a, they have a decent website or if they've been posting a certain message for so long but the they don't want to accept the fact that that message may not be resonating with their client anymore or their website is just not hitting home anymore and when they're getting to the website, it's, the sales are dying. Uh, that's probably one of the hardest things to share with a CEO who's like in love with what they're doing. Uh, but Troy, keep going, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, but you're absolutely right. That's good, I just want to make that, um, that contribution, but uh, I'm sure there are other questions, so allow persons to be able to answer questions because you're sharing some really good information here. Oh, thank you, I appreciate that. So you said having a target audience is key. Are small businesses your audience? or do you target specific types of small businesses? So uh, for us personally, we work with um, a number of different small businesses. Personally, I don't work with restaurants. That's one of the more um, intricate uh, small businesses that take a little bit more of a specialty, I would say, uh, just because the food expires and the restaurateurs tend to be sometimes very specific about their types of restaurants. Uh, but when it comes to small business in general, we do work across the board. Um, we've, we've worked in the healthcare industry with pharmacies, we worked in the retail space, uh, we've worked in product-based companies, service-based companies. The way we see it is that everything breaks down to the numbers, the message that you sell, and the process that you take to do it. Every company is the same. It just takes that um, understanding of analyzing and dissecting it all the way down. Um, so we don't specialize in that specific thing. The, way, the what we do specialize though is in a revenue range. Um, when I work with small businesses, it's between the one million to ten million dollar range. Uh, it's right in that sweet bubble where you are about to burst and and jump and grow higher, but you just need the extra help to get there. Uh, and that's usually where our bubble is that one to ten million dollar range. I've worked with five hundred thousand dollar companies and startups as well um, that have a proof of concept and a large enough target market uh, and a valuation of around that space as well. If you talk about my target market specifically. Excellent. We do have a question from uh, Matt. I'm going to go ahead and uh, unmute you, Matt. One moment. Here we go. Right now. Yeah. Oh, you hey. mute yourself. <laughs> okay, <laughs> go. Hey, Ron, uh, Matt is here. Um, I, I joined the group last week. I, last week was my turn. Thank you for the presentation. And uh, I work full time, you know, just a small intro about me. And I, I started a, a media agency as a side venture. I'm mm -hmm. in Boston. So like, I'm, I was very um, glad that you were giving all this presentation. It's basically most of the things that I see that things that I want to do. So I have a couple of questions and uh, I joined later. So don't mind me if I repeat them. You're good. And so how, how long uh, you guys been in business? We're going into our third year now. Okay. And but I've I, been doing this for over a decade now. So I guess you were working uh, for a company? Yes. Yeah. I've worked for a few different companies prior, prior to this. And then I, I transitioned over and started this with my business partner. Okay. So you guys started off with two guys, you said, right? Yep. Start off with two. Now we have 10. We're down in South Florida for anybody who's local. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, the other question I want to ask um, about your, this, this is my um, general um, uh, discovery that I've been, most of the um, marketing companies, their, their logo background or logo itself based on blow colors. Is there a reason why that you're aware, including you, that's, you know, blue and white? Definitely. So actually, we're, we're, our color is the color in the back is the blue. Um, and I, I, to be transparent with you, I'll be actually as transparent as I possibly can. This is a score presentation that I had to convert over. Um, and unfortunately, the template was not letting me convert into my branded presentations. So unfortunately, I couldn't use my branded one because um, originally I used this through SCORE, which is a volunteer service that I do. So, but our color is that royal blue in the background. And it's, uh, the reason we have that color is because it, it leads to prosperity uh, and wealth is what it's meaning behind it. Uh, and then we also do gray, which is a sense of professionalism. So we have gray, white, and that blue in the background. Those are three colors. Okay, okay. And the other thing, question I wanted to ask, I, I, I hear that you mentioned small businesses. 
Is there a specific reason why? I, I know you, you explained how the small businesses work for you as a sweet spot, but any plan or wh why you guys go for small businesses, not the big ones? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's kind of my why in general. I think that I, I grew up in small business. My dad is like a crazy entrepreneur who's done it all under the sun. Um, son of an immigrant, he moved here and hustled and did everything he could to build his own his own dream, uh, the American dream for himself. And I think what I saw a lot of the times was while he was a hell of a salesman, uh, he did challenge sometimes when it came to developing his own marketing strategies or understanding his finance and accounting properly. Um, and what I realized is that that's, that's very common across the board for small business owners. And what's sad is that the current market uh, for management consulting specifically and consulting in general for small businesses is broken up into boutique firms, usually independent uh, individuals that are offering specific services that in a specialty that they offer. So like either it's a specific marketing firm or specifically an accounting individual, really the bigger consulting firms like a Bain, McKinsey, Deloitte, are really left for the major corporations. And there's tons of those out there. So when you think of small business owners, uh, I wanted to create a firm that was like a one-stop shop for them, that they didn't have to feel like they were having to shop around to multiple people. Because in my mind, if you're really a, a strong business, your brain all communicates properly. And a lot of small businesses right now have a marketing guy that's on his own, an accounting guy that's on his own, a management coach that helps them out that's separate from anything in the business. So we actually, we saw it as an opportunity that if we came together with teams of experts, um, we could really help these small businesses a lot more than just being an independent boutique firm uh, or an independent consultant. Uh, I could have started a Crudo Consultings, uh, but I didn't want to. I wanted to start Equiturn because I wanted to bring multiple consultants together to be a team of experts for the clients that we work with. And we also try to make our funds attainable to them. Like we don't bill, we have hourly rates, but I really prefer not to do it. I try to avoid it at all costs, honestly, because I don't like when small business owners feel like they have to be nervous to call me or pick up the phone and talk to me. I want them to feel like we're here to help them and we're hands-on no matter what. Uh, and we also take a very hands-on approach. A lot of the times when you work with management consultants or strategy consultants, they give you the ideas and solutions and approach, which is extremely essential, uh, but aren't really there to be the hands-on support on the ground. So when we approach it, uh, we actually, the reason I love working with small businesses is because we can do this. We actually build out their marketing strategy. We actually run their accounting and help them do their bookkeeping and accounting. We actually go in and hire and support their operations and join their team meetings just as a coach would. So we kind of do all aspects of it, um, which I think makes it very unique. And I just love working with small businesses because I think of my own father who is really trying to achieve an opportunity and growth and just needed the extra help. And there's not much out there for them. Not much like this where it's a, a unified team. Great, I like that. And where are you from? Where's uh, from? Where my family's from. So uh, a family's from Israel, but as you can imagine, we're from all over the place from there. So like uh, Turkey, Iraq, Syria, Israel, Spain. So like I'm a little bit of everything, but uh, my family originally, both my parents are from Israel. Very good. All right. Thank you. Uh, that's all I have. Of course. Of course. Thanks for the questions, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's funny, man, too. Like our, our logo is, uh, is also blue since you were talking about it. Oh, nice. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. know why that's a, yeah, it's a, it's a good observation. I didn't even think about that, but now like, you know, when you think about it, it's like, yeah, a lot of logos are yeah, kind of weird. Yeah, um, no, I mean the color matters. Let me tell you, we, I, it's funny you brought it up, Matt, because I swear to you, we probably had like six different colors that we were playing with and removing this one and going to this one. And cause you know what the color, you don't realize it, but a color really says a lot. It really says a lot about your business. And there's so many stories behind the color that you can build. So like, if you look at our website, it's all this Equiturn blue. If you look at our social media, you'll see it across the board. Uh, so you so don't like this one, no? <laughs> no, I'm not against it. Was, was awesome. I love your branding. Your branding is better than I am right now. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I wish I had that behind me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if you want to know, yeah. I'll give you the cliche. I mean, since we're talking about marketing and branding and all that, the reason we called our company Equiturn is because we, we turn equity into opportunity. So that's our whole concept. The, the nice. behind it all. Uh, and then we, we turn business owners' equity and turn it into opportunity. Nice. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, one thing that I, I would like to add here as it relates to color for those who may not be familiar with branding is that there's an area of branding that talks that speaks about this psychology of color. Mm -hmm. One of the beautiful things with, with blue, um, especially um, I've seen it in North America, it, 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 it gives you the emotes, the feeling of not only um, prosperity, but um, a level of maturity 
because um, as a company, uh, I would have been surprised. I was actually surprised that you were just um, going into your third year and using a color blue because um, blue is so synonymous with those um, uh, companies, those corporate American companies that have been around for a very long time, things like IBM and Ford. So that, that would have a psychological uh, benefit there. Um, one of the other things too is the, the culture because I'm located in the Caribbean and, and if you were to create um, a, a logo for blue for a company in the Caribbean now, I can almost tell you nine out of 10 times it will be rejected uh, because it's considered boring for people who enjoy good carnival and, and good food and, and lots of energy. So like here, colors like, <laughs> colors like orange uh, are really, really powerful. But then when you see Orange Internationally, there's an associated with um, discount services and discount products. So um, that's what I guess is the thing about branding is that as you move from one location to another, uh, I myself had to change um, my branding online from my branding locally. So the names that I use online are very different from what I use locally. The, 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 the products, um, the colors, it's, it has, has to be very, very different because um, your, your audience, your market will have different uh, interpretations for what you do when you're dealing with different people. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. It's yeah. funny you say that because that, that's honestly why I start with target audience. Because even before you pick your color or choose your brand, you gotta know who you're targeting. You have to. Uh, your location, your people, any, any, all of that changes. I mean, if you're a very feminine brand, your color shouldn't be a very dark green because it, it's probably not gonna resonate with your brand. So like you're, you're spot on Troy. And I love that you say that um, you're absolutely right. The Caribbean is very bright colors. Uh, this would not resonate <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, I've seen, we do a lot of tests actually with our color before we picked it. Uh, and it really, what we saw, it did create uh, a sense of uh, credibility and trust in the brand and a sense of what we, what I said before, prosperity that, that people felt when they saw the brand color. So I love that you said that though, Troy, that's really spot on. Fantastic, guys. Yeah, we, we got to do like a mastermind one day with uh, you, Troy, Mr. Matt, Peter, all of us. Yeah, that'd be, uh, that'd be pretty interesting. I love that. I actually, enough, I just did a presentation with four or five marketing individuals on a Zoom call where it was like Crisis 101. And we all covered like a you know, marketing. It was a lot of fun. And it, and it was cool because then at the end of it, they let us all kind of, not challenge, but share and, and put out there what, the approach we might have taken on it. And I thought it was great. So Matt, if you're ever into it, Troy, I'm all about it. <laughs> I'm always down. <laughs> That's awesome. I really appreciate that. And thank you so much for this uh, fantastic presentation. Uh, guys, once again, whoever's still with us, I know we, we, we usually do it for about an hour. We're a little over tonight. Uh, I know sometimes we do that, but um, Ron's been gracious enough to uh, put all his information there. If you guys wanted to go ahead and reach out to him with any questions, um, the invitation is there. So, um, so yeah, man, that, that fantastic stuff, man. Really, really appreciate you. Um, and uh, Peter, did you have any uh, final words uh, for us? Today? Yes, I want to remind you that uh, to all of our, all that is still left here, that next week we have the amazing David Mazer uh, that's gonna come and um, uh, amaze us to say like that with his knowledge. Uh, he he's the one and only that was the inspiration for uh, uh, the movie Jerry Maguire, and uh, he he has like a powerful powerful mindset and the way to put the things he's a an amazing entrepreneur a million dollars uh, brand and um i think he's gonna give us some good lessons that we can learn from it and uh, inspire us to move forward to to be great and uh, to grow and uh, keep our mindset uh, on the right path and um, stick together as a group as usually that's all I think that's all we have. Thank and you I've, very much, everybody, for having me. I really appreciate it. And uh, always Ron, welcome to come back. Ron, uh, nice. I appreciate uh, f uh, once again, you know, I appreciate for all your um, knowledge and all your shares. And I have everybody enjoy it. And um, please uh, stay with us. Uh, and um, uh, I'm going to, you know, share, send you the information uh, so you can join our, uh, our uh, WhatsApp community as well. Okay. Awesome. Thank, Thank you guys you. so much. Have a good one. Bye, everybody. Thank good you. night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. <laughs>